want to share with you yeah. And your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ So tune in, tune in And we will grow together To increase our faith with God With one touch Ministries We're touching hearts And changing lives And said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray close by. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to and began to sorrowfully uh, and began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Yes. Wait here. Watch. Keep watching with me. Yes. He went a little further and fell on his face. He prayed, Oh my God, my Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Come on, sir. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as your, your will be done. Yes, sir. Yes. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. My God. Come on, sir. And said to Peter, so could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Uh, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Yes, sir. My God, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done, not my will. Yes, God. But your will. Your will. Be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed a third time, saying the same words. And then he came to his disciples and said to them, Sleep now. Take your rest. Look, the hour is near that the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Look, he who betrays me is at hand. You better take your time, sir. I want to take my thought from the part of the scripture that says, that he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful even unto death. Wait here and watch for me. And he went a little further and fell on his face. He prayed, Oh my Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, yes, sir. but your will be done. Yes. Hallelujah. I want to speak from a subject title today. Not okay? That's okay. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. You're not okay? But that's okay. That's I need to see you type in the comments. Not okay? That's okay. That's it, yes. Yeah. And so where I got the title of this message from is because I work at a company, uh, I work for a mortgage company, and when you become, when you get behind on your mortgage payments, um, they put you into a status called foreclosure. And so before we send out those letters for foreclosure, one of the things that we send out is a letter and it says, not okay, that's okay. And the reason why that you're receiving this letter is for the simple fact is that we recognize, we understand that, you know what, these are some troublesome times, and right about now, you may not be okay. There may be some things, there may be some finance, there's some things that happen with COVID, and you may have lost your job due to COVID. You may have lost your job due to being sick. You may have lost your job uh, for the simple fact that uh, you, you may have been going through a divorce. Uh, but we ask you a question, uh, not okay? That's all right. 
it's okay. Because we were prompting you to give us a call to be able to say, hey, listen, uh, we have some we have some solutions to the problems that you may be having. So it's okay that you're not okay. Yes, sir. Come on. Only thing we need you to do is just pick up the telephone, give us a call, go to our website and see what programs we have available for you. Because right now I see that you're not in an okay situation. Yes, come on now. We just want to find some type of way to help you. Because, uh, now, you can talk to anybody who is, um, uh, for me, working in collections for years now. The collections people will tell you that it costs too much money for you to lose your home. It costs the company too much money for you to lose your home. It costs too much money for you to lose your car. Uh -huh. Come on. That's when they send you a letter and say, hey. Are you okay? That's all right. It's all right not to be okay. Because it's going to cost us more money to try to pull you out of that situation. That's right. It's going to cost much more money for us to foreclose on your home than it would be for you to just to go ahead and pay it. Let's find out a way for us to be able to help you pay it. That's right. There's options. There's options that we have and, the, and, and right now that's what God is saying to you right now hey listen you may be in a terrible situation you may feel like that you're not okay but that's okay yes sir come on all you have to do get on your knees and pray and seek my face turn from your wicked ways and be able to come and seek my face. That's what God said for us to do today. He said, hey, listen, I understand that you may not be in an okay situation. That's okay. That's it. That's it. Three things that God hates. Three things that God hates. He hates the lust of the eye. So when you see something, you gotta have it. He hates the lust of the flesh. That flesh rises up and you have to be able to uh, just uh, please that flesh. And the third thing he hates is the pride of life. Now I ain't talking about pride of life. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about pride is when someone is proud for they're ignorant and have a lack of respect. Prideful people usually don't have many friends since they think they're superior over everybody else. You gotta take your time. The pride of life. Prideful people are uh, uh, afraid to ask for help. Yes. Prideful people, uh, they'd rather just, uh, 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 just let their life flush down the toilet and not receive any help. And so in this moment right now, God is speaking to you and say, hey, listen, Johnny, you need some help, my brother. There's some things that's happening inside of your mindset that you know that you're not okay with. Uh, you have suicidal thoughts. You have all, all kind of things that's happening in your mind. And God is saying that, listen, you're not okay, but that's okay because I have somebody in place to be able to help you pride yes, when getting to your uh, life and pride will have you feel like that you don't need the help and you can do this thing all by yourself but I preached last year I said that last year was the year uh, that there's no more long ranger we're going to have to grab us a brother, we have to grab us a sister that we, have to, we can connect with, uh, connect with and be able to go forth in Jesus name, say I'm not okay, there's something that's wrong with me, there's something that's attacking my mind that's led me to know and say that there's something that's not right and I'm not right, I'm not okay, but God is saying it's okay you better come on pastor Pride yes. 
my God. Pride will, will allow Rebecca to lose her home. Jesus. Because she didn't want to pick up the telephone and say that I need some help. How can you help me in my situation? Pride. Pride is Satan's little helper. <laughs> you cry out now. Pride is Satan's little helper. In some ways, we all deal with pride in our own little way. We all got a little sense of pride. Now I'm not talking about pride like, hey, I've accomplished something. Hey, I've done something right. You should be proud that you have made accomplishments in your life. But when you have that ignorant, yeah. I can stand ignorant folks. That's why I said ignorant, not ignorant, ignorant folk. They have no sense of respect. Pride is Satan's little helper. And in some kind of way, we all have a little pride that's on the inside of, the, inside of us. And we need help. For real, y'all. We need help in allowing, and, and, and allow the, uh, uh, stop allowing the enemy to whisper in your ears and say, Hey, you don't want to look like a fool. Don't call for no help. Mm -hmm. You got that right. That's pride. There are people listening to me today that needs help, not just financially, but mentally. Yeah. You have people that are suffering from anxiety. They're suffering from uh, having restless nights. They suffer from hearing voices late in the midnight hour and something on the inside of you that said they can't turn your brain off and stay, so you stay up all night long and some of you scared to fall asleep at night because you say, I'm gonna die. But let me tell you something. I don't have a problem with falling asleep at night. Why? Because if I do, I know I have a home in the sky and I'll tell this world goodbye. You see, because I'm going to fly away. <laughs> They'll be caught up together to live with Jesus Christ forever. I said, I'm going to fly away. For those of you who are Hezekiah Walker and lovers, you know that song right there. <laughs> see, I'm going to fly away. And it said, I will be free. I will be free someday. And so today, as you can see, that as I was speaking the sevenfold blessings over your life, you have to be able to speak peace to your mind, peace to your heart, and peace to your spirit about anybody, anything that may be getting on your nerves or disturbing you today. You have to speak peace to your mind. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6 through 9, it says, be anxious for nothing. Mm -mm. Don't, don't, don't be anxious for nothing. That was a, a prophet's my teacher uh, anointing right there. Don't, 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 don't be anxious <laughs> for nothing. Don't be anxious for nothing, but in everything, but with prayer and supplication, with gratitude, make your request be made known to God. Hallelujah. You want to know how to get rid of your anxiety? You want to know how to get, I told you it was in my message this past week. You want to know how to get rid of your anxiety? It says take it to the Lord in prayer. Prayer and supplication with gratitude. You have to say, God, I know that this is a situation that's happening. God, this is something that's going on. It keeps affecting my mind. But God, I give you the praise, honor, and glory right now in the name of Jesus that I want to switch it off. In the name of Jesus, uh, I'm going to switch that thing off in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to worry about it no more. I'm not going to think about it no more. I'm just going to turn it off. I need you to type in the comments and say, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it off because I'm not going to worry about this thing no more. I ain't worried about Johnny. I'm not worried about Susie. I'm not worried about Rebecca. I'm not worried about Kim and Tim and Larry and John. I'm letting them jokers go in the name of Jesus. I'm taking them to the Lord in prayer. I'm not even going to worry about it because the doctor said this the other day that I received a bad diagnosis. But I'm here to tell you to not be anxious for nothing. You may feel like that you're not okay, but that's all right, honey, because it's going to be okay. Hallelujah. I 
need you to type in the comments and say, it's going to be okay. But be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, making your request known unto God. And so right there, you got to be able to say, Father God, I know that in the name of Jesus, that the doctor said that I have cancer, that the doctor said that I have some form of autism, that the doctor said that I have something that's going on with me with my legs. But I, have, I believe the report of the Lord that says I'm healed in Jesus' name. I was wounded for my transgressions. You was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. And I believe that I am healed. I speak peace over my mind. I speak peace over my heart. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will protect your heart and protect your mind through Jesus Christ. And it says here in verse 8, Find my brother, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there are any virtue, if there are anything to praise. Hallelujah. I want to tell you right now that you need to be able to give God an awesome praise right there. Anybody have a praise? Do you have a praise in this house? Uh, hallelujah. Do anybody have a praise on your lips? You should say, your praise shall forever be on my lips. Hallelujah. You need to be able to steal the enemy by the clapping of your hands. You need to be able to steal the enemy by being able to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You need to be able to say, Satan, you have no dominion. You need to be able to say, Satan, you have no power. You need to be able to say, Satan, you have no authority. Praise confuses the enemy. I need you to type into the comments and say, praise steals the enemy. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That's what God wants you to be able to do in this season. To be able to confuse the enemy. Hallelujah. Praise steals the enemy. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you're doing it for them right now. That you're doing it for a body. That you're doing it for Susan. That you're doing it for Inez. That you're doing it right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I praise them because it's good. I praise them because it's good. I praise them because he brought me out of darkness into his harmless light. I praise them because He's good. I praise him because he's kind. I praise him and allow his mercy endure forever. I praise him because I'm allowing the thing that was taken over my mind. I'm picking it out in the name of Jesus. Pick it out of my heart. Pick it out of my mind. Pick it out of my spirit. You can't have me, Satan. According to his riches and glory, I don't know about you on today, 
That's the reason why people die of death because of unforgiveness in their mind because they can't let stuff go. And they be, begin to get sickness on their body because the enemy that attacked their mind. Yes, sir. That destroyed their will. Possibly even destroyed their will to live. So Jesus always been. Because in the beginning, he said, let us, who is God talking to? Us. The Trinity. He's speaking to the Son, speaking to the Holy Spirit. Let us create man in our image. Let us create man in our image. Jesus has always been in the presence of his Father. How would you feel if you've always been in the presence of your parents? Never let them go. you always right there on their side. you always attached like an umbilical cord. And you be with them every single day, every single moment, every single hour. You never left them. They always fed you. Make sure you take care of every single day of your life. Jesus never been. Never been on the outside of the presence of God. There you go. You preach it real So let me go back to Genesis. Yes, sir. When Adam and Eve fell, it separated. It separated us from God. Why? Because God cannot look on sin. That's the reason why when, when, when the Bible says that God came to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day, God said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, here I am, Lord. I have to cover myself because I heard that you was coming. And he said, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? That's when they discovered good versus evil on that day. So what God had to do, in order for God to be able to even see Adam and Eve, he had to uh, slay a lamb. He had to give them clothes. Blood had to be shed in order for God to be in the presence of Adam and Eve. So, fast forward it to now Jesus being hung on the cross. Remember, God cannot look on sin. He can't look at it. He has to turn his back on it. Yes. So when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he was saying, Father, please, I'm begging of you, please God, Please, Father, let this cup, let this pass from me, God. Uh -huh. The reason why Jesus was praying that way, he said, but not my will. Because Jesus, he knew that it was his flesh speaking. Yeah. Come on, come on, not, my not my will, but your will shall be done, God. But I don't want this to happen, but it's not because of me. I came to save my brothers and my sisters who deserve to go to hell, but I'm not going to let it. When Jesus hung on that cross, Jesus became sin for us. Jesus came, became sin for us. And when he became sin for us, when he screamed out, Eli, Eli, love us about tonight. My God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? I believe it was at that moment that God said, I've done all I can do, son. Now I have to turn my back on you because you became sin for those 
because I can't look at sin. Yeah. God the Father literally turned his back on his son. He said, son, I know you're not okay. But it's going to be okay. And one of the reasons why we celebrate on this Resurrection Sunday, we're celebrating the death and life of Jesus Christ and what he done for us on the cross because it was us that was supposed to pay that sin. It was us who was supposed to go to hell. It was us they were supposed to pay the penalty of sin. But the blood, his blood, washed. Because it takes blood to cover up sin. That's one thing that those limbs and, and those doves and the things that they were sacrificed in the Old Testament, that's one thing it just covered the sin. But Jesus' blood washed. I mean, we was, we was watching the TV show The Cleaner, and a man was cleaning up the blood. <laughs> Woo! He cleaned that white couch. It looked like that white couch was brand new. It looked like no murder had ever happened. That's what Jesus' blood did for us on Calvary. Yes, I like that. Good Wash away every come on, come on. Mm. Yes, wash away every single stain every single blood every single thing that we've done in our life every single thought that we had in our life Jesus washed it away and on today you may be saying Pastor Shane you know what over the past few weeks, over the past month, since the beginning of 2022, I have not been okay. I, I, I lost my job. I, hey, listen, I lost my mother. 2022. I'm not okay. People are not okay, but it's okay. I have faith and trust to know and believe that my mother and many other people who have passed on, they're at where I'm trying to get to. Come on, come on, come on. And I thank God, <laughs> I thank God that he gave his life for us. Yeah. So many people out there, they don't believe the way that we believe. My wife just prayed, you just heard her, she prayed for a Muslim man. Who knows, you probably just plant a seed for that man to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior. And may not be able to go back and tell his family. Come on, bitch, ah, my God, Because it depends on how deep in the Muslim religion that they go, they will kick him out the family. Come on. Who knows, he may have been for real for a Christian. He might believe in Jesus Christ. Ooh, God. But because he don't want to be separated from his family, he takes on the trait. Hey, Daniel! Oh, God! Oh, God! I'm here to encourage you today. You may be saying, listen, man of God, I, I'm really not okay. But I definitely need prayer. Listen, connect with me and my wife. Invite us. Let us know that you need some prayer. We'll reach out to you today and let you know, hey, listen, we understand that you're not okay, but listen, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So, Father God, for those who are currently watching me live, I want to say, Father God, Protect their hearts. Protect their minds right now in the name of Jesus. For Brittany Brown, I ask you God to do it for her right now in the name of Jesus. 
I pray and proclaim peace in our heart, peace in our mind, peace in our spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For Father God, for Apostle and Prophet is Nard right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I know that they have faced some situations these past few months. And Father God, they actually called and said, Pastor Shannon, Prophetess Nadetra, we're not okay. We're here to say, listen. We sat back, we encouraged them to say, listen. May not be okay, but that's okay. Because God got you covered. God shall continue to cover you guys. He said, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. I believe it's Nico Washington. I want to be able to say to you, you may have faced some things this past year. You may have faced some things in your life. People may have said some things about you. People may have done some things to you that made you feel in your body that you're not okay. But I'm here to tell you today that Jesus washed away every situation. He washed away every single circumstance. He washed away that dirtiness that you may have felt. Sister Inez, I, I, I speak right now to you and your family. I speak to my nephew right now that you touch him in his heart. You touch him in his mind. Touch him in his spirit. Make him a brand new person. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you're doing it right now. Cover in the blood of Jesus. Cover now. In the name of Jesus. Ashley Walker, I want to, you want to come on up. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus, woman of God. That God continues to protect you. That God continues to cover you. That God will make a way of escape for you. Father, I speak to Ashley Walker right now. To her situation. To her circumstance. I speak to her heart right now. The matters of her heart. Right now, in the name of Jesus. The matters of her heart. She's been broken, God. She's been broken, Lord. Repair her heart. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Ashley Walker, please don't go anywhere. I just want to release a little bit more. Um, well, Pastor, Pastor, I'm telling you, Pastor, that was a mighty great word. What a mighty great word. My God from Zion. Hallelujah. I want to release a little bit more. Pastor was touching when he was saying that God was going to restore you and that God was going to bring you peace and God was going to do the matters of the heart. God said, yes, I am going to do what needs to be done. He said, first, I'm going to heal the matters of the heart. Yes. He is going to heal you completely. God said, yes, you have been bruised. Yes, you have been used. Yes, you have been tormented. We bind the spirit of trauma that tried to attach itself to your life and cause you to lose your mind, to cause you to fall into depression, to cause you to, to think ill about yourself. But God said, now, as I'm doing what needs to be done in the matters of the heart, God said, let me tell you about what I'm about to do with your blessings. 
that I'm about to pour over top of you. God said, you're not going to have room to receive. And he said, let me tell you something. Even if you don't have room to receive. Oh, shut up. God said, go find yourself a pantry room. Glory to God. He said, go find yourself a pantry room. And the reason why God is saying a pantry room, because we all know when we go into the kitchen, we have a kitchen and we have cabinets in the kitchen. But the overflow goes inside the pantry. My God. The overflow food goes inside the pantry. The overflow of goods go inside the pantry. And sometimes is a little too small and everything is full, you have to sometimes take it to the garage. It come by, 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 by my side. Sometimes you gotta break down and go buy a deep freezer. But God is saying, my God from Zion, he said, hallelujah, go get Ashley, uh -huh. go get a pantry. He said, because even though you may not have room to receive it, he said, I want you to store your blessings. He said, because in this it's time for you to be selfish. In this season, it is time for you to put your blessings inside of the pantry. Because when it's time to take them out, you have an overflow sitting inside your pantry. Every blessing that we get is not meant to give out to everybody. Yes, yes, yes. If you yes. Christians, you kingdom workers, you, my God, from Zion, you, 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 so-called hearing people, if y'all would just learn, every time you get a blessing, it's not meant for you to share yeah. with everybody. Every time you get something, it's not meant for you to call your neighbor and tell your neighbor exactly what it is that you got. Even if he or she was, was interceding for you, sometimes you gotta say, sis, Thank you for praying for me because God just moved. Yes. And leave it just like that. Yes. Sometimes you gotta say, yo, bro, thank you so much for interceding for me. God just moved. And let me tell you something, let me, let me, let me share this with you. Sometimes people plot on your miracle. Some people plot on your blessing. Some people plot on your overflow. Some people want the keys to your pantry. This is what God said. Be careful who has the to the book of your vision because the moment that people get access to the book of your vision what happens is they wind up taking uh, it's called stealing but if you gave them access they call it borrowing my God from Zion and what happens is they go borrow they go borrow your things and they go wear it like God came into that yeah, I'm not catching this thing. My sister had a girlfriend that was attached to our church. Glory to God. And I'll never forget my sister took a trip to New Mexico. A school trip to New Mexico. And my parents was fond of this young lady. She let this young lady stay in the house and sleep in my sister's room. Sleep in my sister's bed. Use my sister's bathroom while she was in New Mexico. Okay. But what my parents did not know, because they gave her access to my sister's living quarters, because at the time my sister was living downstairs, so my sister had like a little apartment downstairs. She had her own bathroom. We turned the room into a, she had a bathroom. She had a, a, a walk-in closet. She had all kinds of access. Yes. So because my sister was in New Mexico and my parents allowed this young lady to come into their home and sleep in my sister's room and use her bathroom and have access to her living quarters. What my parents did not know is this chick was wearing my sister's clothes. Wow. See, this is what happens when you give people access to the vault of your vision. You give them the access to wear your clothes. You give them the access to wear your shoes. You give them the access to carry your handbags. And put your jewelry on and use your makeup. Put your eyelashes on. Put your suits on, uh, brothers. Uh, put your fly shoes on. Put that, that shirt tie on, that bow tie on. Uh, put your joints on. When you give people access to the vault of your vision, people come they start sleeping in your bed and they start using your restroom, your bathroom, 
vision. God said, write the vision, make it plain. Put it in the book. Only for your eyes only. Hide it. Put it away. Tuck it up. Because God said, when I birth it out of you, and then when I give you the instructions on how to move it, and when I give you the directions on which way to turn left, right, or keep walking, or never look back, but just keep walking. When God said, I give you these specific instructions, he said, daughter, do your suffer on paper. Do not share this information with nobody. Don't tell me you're trying to help kingdom, because kingdom don't mind cutting you down. Kingdom don't mind borrowing. Kingdom don't mind stealing. Kingdom don't mind taking. If you let